Yeah, not much more. I would say, you know, I would say most preschools in America, by the time they're between four and five, they do between four and five hours a day, five days a week as as getting them ready. And you don't have to do that. I mean, preschool is optional, but I would say, you know, no more than that. No after school. No, you know, and if I would say less is more, <laughs> less is more. Homeschool moms. There's homeschool moms listening. You're like, okay, good. I'm I'm, I'm there, and I'm there at four, five, six, seven, eight. Is it more? Uh, is it optimal? Is it back to the ideal? Is school part of the ideal? Going to a school at six years old for six to seven hours, going to a school at eight years old for eight up to eight hours, is that optimal? So it depends on the child because there are some children that benefit and do well in social environments when it comes to preschool. Um, I mean, when it comes to primary school. And there are other children who are neurodivergent, who are um, de- have developmental issues, who may have something just that's a little bit different about them physically or emotionally, and they can suffer a lot. So it depends on the child. I think some children actually really benefit from homeschooling if they're struggling socially. And if kids are doing well socially, then school's a good thing. So it really depends on the child. But I think this idea that one size fits all and we take a square peg and we stick it in a round hole and we take a hammer and we hit the hammer until the square peg, which is how we think about school. And so a lot of kids suffer because the kids who are neurodivergent or the kids who have, um, you know, other physical attributes that make them different or maybe they're, you know, maybe they're on the spectrum or, you know, those kids actually are often really tortured in in school. And so those kids actually tend to do better if they're homeschooled. And then if as a, as part of the homeschooling, they have an they have a community. So I never ever recommend homeschooling in isolation because children need to separate from their parents, but they can be homeschooled and still separate from their parents, but they need a community. They need other adults. In other words, if it's only all the time with your parents, that's not good for children. But if they have a community of other kids that they get together with on a regular basis or learn with or other parents who are teaching them too, it sort of creates a community. I guess the, the key is really community. Any advice for you know, scripts or things that you recommend moms or women can say, not just to, we talked about the husbands or the partners earlier, but to people who question their choices. I mean, I know there's even some, there is some shaming of stay-at-home moms to some degree. Weirdly, you know, I think feminism, unfortunately, it's one of the toxic uh, implications of feminism that you're less than if you just stay at home. You're not doing as interesting things. Mm. Um, I think there's a sense of judgment that some women feel for being passionately committed to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna to make sacrifices, and our family's gonna make sacrifices. So I'm physically at home. That's my whole job. I think that's a kind of. I've always thought that's a kind of projected guilt. So in other words, the women who don't enjoy being with their children or don't want to be with their children. Um, you think there's a secret uh, lo- longing there that's not. Well, I think there's conflict. I think there's a lot of conflict, and conflict means that there's aggression. And that aggression um, gets projected onto women who stay at home because, and it could also be envy, you know, secret unconscious envy, because those women really enjoy being with their children. And so the idea is that you envy what you can't be. Uh, or what, who you aren't. And so part of it may be that some of that aggression that they feel, some of that conflict they feel is projected onto those women who stay at home. And I think some of it's also envy. I don't know if that helps those women who, because I do know that, you know, you go to a cocktail party. This is what I always hear. And this is, again, what do you do? Yeah, what do you do? And then I once my you say, I raise my children, everybody turns away and turns, right? And so and, and so I think we all need to be aware of that and that raising children is probably the most important job anyone can do it is. because in the end, um, you know, society depends upon healthy children that grow into healthy, responsible, loving adults. And so there is nothing more important than raising children. And so somehow we've gotten it. So Freud said that to be happy, you need 
love and meaningful work. He always said love first, but in our society, we've turned it around. You need work and maybe some love.